Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome back. For those of you who are coming for another podcast, thank you so much. For those of you that are new, hi, my name is Leah. I am Pygmy Tiger Knits on Instagram and right here on YouTube, I'm coming to you from Midland, Michigan. I've been a Michigander my entire life, been born here, multi-generation, but I have lived out of state uh, several times. Well, lived in Virginia for a while, in Indianapolis, and in my summers in college, I lived out in Washington. So, but Michigan is definitely the place that I like to be the most. So, welcome. Thank you so much for everybody who is joining me. This is Charlie, the Pygmy Tiger. He definitely just, I don't know what it is. When I start podcasting, he runs from wherever he is in the house. So, I have a lot to talk about today. I didn't think I had that much to talk about, but there's a lot here to talk about. I made a little list today. Crazy town. So let's just get into it. I hope you all had a great week last week. I hope you're gearing up for a good week this week. I know I am. Just gonna get moving and I'm super excited. We're just inching closer and closer to the holiday season, although I am getting very excited for Halloween. I changed my mind on one of the costumes for the kids. <laughs> Maggie is going to be a porcupine now because I saw this woman uh, post a video on TikTok. Sorry, TikTok is such a time suck, but oh my God, it just, it gives my mom brain a break and lets me laugh at some things sometimes. So I try not to be on it a ton, but generally in the evening right before bed. Um, but I try not to do that because then my brain just goes crazy too sometimes. So anyway, there was this fabulous porcupine costume and I'm like, I have got to make that. But I think I'm going to make it last because I'm way too excited to make it. So that means I need to make the other two costumes first. So I'm super motivated to get them done. But in the meantime, I've been working on my friend Jessica. She's getting married in a couple weeks. Uh, she is she asked me to make the card box. So I'm making a little camper RV card box, uh, out of paper mache cardboard and tape because you know, and of course some paint to finish it up. So if you don't know, I was an art teacher in my previous life before becoming a home engineer and taking care of my three kids. So I really do love fabrication. So Halloween costumes and stuff like that are generally really entertaining for me. We've had some fun, fun, fun costumes, so I will generally post some of those on Instagram after it happens, but right now I'm focusing on the card box to get it done for the wedding, and then I'll be starting those Halloween costumes. Still knitting, though. Still have to knit. I've talked about it before, but knitting is definitely my progress for the day. It's my thing that makes me feel like I've actually accomplished something tangible, not just something that gets washed away every single day, usually multiple times a day. You know, the cooking, the cleaning, the kid care, all that stuff. So knitting is definitely my zen. I have a couple FOs this week. I have a pair of socks, pair number 24, and my uh, journey to knit 20 five new pairs of Christmas socks. I need to turn my light down a little bit. It's hurting my eyes. That's better. Um, these ones are night owl fiber and this is Christmas lights. Oh my gosh. I love this. I showed one completed one last week and I finished the second one. Of course, it's one of my little progress creepers from the gnome knitter love her you know christmas tree christmas tree i love this colorway it was so much fun i almost want to ask her if she will knit or dye up some dk for a cabled sweater in this part of the yarn because it's just such a fun it's such a fun speckle it's so pretty i love the colors that are in it I think that would be really, really, really fun. So maybe I'll put that on my like long-term wish list bucket list. I'll have to reach out to them. They're very nice. It's mother daughter duo. The other finished objects, we went up north to, it's so funny because in Michigan, everybody just says up north and it's basically just anywhere an hour, at least an hour north from where you are. But we went to, we decided to take the girls to go to Mackinac Island which if you don't know, if you're not local or from Michigan or don't really know anything about Michigan, Mackinac Island is an island right off the tip of Michigan, 
right by the Mackinac Bridge that joins the upper and lower peninsula. Oh, 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 sorry. And no cars are allowed on the island except for emergency vehicles. So it's all horse-drawn carriages and stuff like that. And you walk and it's a really small island. It's like under four square miles. So it's really cute. It's definitely a tourist attraction. The Grand Hotel is there and all this. And we just thought it would be fun to take the kids. And with my awesome new wonderful old wagon that we take the kids with, it made it a lot more doable instead of wearing Maggie and having her strapped to me the whole time and the big girls having to walk. So the island was really fun. We kind of had hit and miss weather. There was some rain, there was some fog and whatnot. We lucked out on the rain though and that we were on the horse-drawn carriage tour and it rained. The rest of it was sunny um, and a little bit. It was weird. We're having a weird Indian summer right now in Michigan where I am. This is a very late Indian summer for what we usually, when we usually get one. And I mean, it was like 74 degrees <laughs> over the weekend. Today it was almost 80 and I'm like, oh, it's October. I'm going to wear sweatpants. That's sweatpants. Sweatshirts and jeans. Yes, sweatpants. I love sweatpants, but you know jeans and sweatshirts and start to break out the hand knits. Like I'm ready. So ready. So gearing up for the trip, I, it looked like it might be in the fifties while we were there. So I was like, Oh shoot, I better get working on the girl's new hats. So this is the hat that I was talking about last week. It's called the Cullen ear flap hat. So it's got flaps for the ears and these nice ties. So you can keep it secure. I have my nice little wooden laser cut label. I just searched on Etsy for it, but oh my God, when they came, they smelled so good. They don't really smell anymore, but I love wood burning smell. It reminds me of my dad growing up. That and sawdust. Those two smells send me straight to memories of my dad. He carves and makes fish and waterfowl decoys and he wood burns all the texture into it. So that smell is definitely a thing. So this one is Maggie. She's purple. And then Lucy is green. And Miss Edie is, of course, blue, now that they're so opinionated about their colors. Maggie doesn't care right now. Charlie, leave that alone. Um, Maggie doesn't care, but I just keep choosing purple for her. We'll see what she decides when she has the ability to voice her opinion. So those three and the pom-poms. So those are ready and ready to go. We didn't need them this weekend <laughs> as it was uh, muggy, which was just odd. Mackinac Island was cool. You know, it's full of fudge and stuff. We stayed in Mackinac City, and I got to tell you, it was the worst. Don't ever go to Mackinac City. If you're going to go to Mackinac Island, try to make it a day trip and stay in, like, Petoskey or St. Ignace across the bridge or something else. Just Mackinac City was garbage. It's like the Virginia Beach of Michigan. It was trashy and awful. Our hotel accommodations were awful. The staff and management team were terrible and just rude and not worth it. Don't do it. Just don't. I was looking, I did so much research on it. The, um, there's one family that owns 80% of the hotels in Mackinac City and more than eight restaurants there. So it's really a monopoly and they can just kind of do whatever they want because you kind of don't have a choice. So do not re recommend Mackinac City ever. Petoskey is an hour away. Go for Petoskey. Petoskey every time. Beautiful, great restaurants. Go to Beard's Brewery. Amazing pizza. Oh my God. Beautiful. And just, it was, yeah. But anyway, the island was cool. The girls had a blast. Mom and dad, not so much, but the kids had fun and that made me happy. So moving on. <laughs> the kids are also back in school this week because we got hit with upper respiratory infections for all three, which was a trip. Edie, my eldest, did get COVID tested, but she was negative. Thank goodness. So we're generally pretty careful. So anyway, yeah. And I came home and of course came home to squishy mail. Love squishy mail. I've been waiting for my second shipment from a homespun house. And it got here. So I'll show you the other yarns when I talk about works in progress, whips, because I did not cast this one on, but this one's called Lincoln. And this is her soft sock fingering, which is a 7525. It is the squishiest, springiest, most round sprung base 
of the 7525 I've ever felt. It is plump and gorgeous. I love this base. I really like this red, this deep red. I think these are going to be a pair of Christmas socks, but like really heavily textured cabled. And then maybe I'll try my hand at designing a pair of socks for a change. I also picked up this one. It's called the Secret Vampire Club. So I don't know why, or <laughs> I don't know why it's beautiful. And it's one of her, it's her Halloween colorway. Um, but I don't know if I was thinking this could actually be Christmas, but I just really liked it. So I really love that green is a great Christmas color that I don't think enough people use. So I think that was probably why, but happy with it, excited about it. It's going in the Christmas sock yarn stash because I have cast on Christmas sock pair number 25. Yay! And I haven't decided yet if I'm going to keep making Christmas socks this year or save some for next year and just kind of every year add a couple new pairs um, and start working on the gift knitting. So that way I would love to have all my gift knitting done by the end of November. So that way during December, I can just focus on family time and all those fun traditions that we started to do with the girls and birthdays because there's two birthdays and you know, cookie and just all that stuff and not have to stress so much about, oh man, I got to knit till midnight tonight to get this gift done. I would love to have all the Christmas gift knitting done by Thanksgiving, ideally, because to me, the Christmas season starts the day after Thanksgiving. So the other thing that came in the mail, I reached out, I told you guys last week that the Lamb and Kid and Diamond Lane, they're one of the yarn lines, they, act, they very kindly dyed me some more of the colors that I needed, but they accidentally sent me the wrong ones. They sent me this one, the, um, the Pebble Dash base, and this is the Pop Rocks colorway, which is just, oh my God, phenomenal pink. Love it, but that was not the color I needed. I need this, this pink. That's what I think it's called Taffy, Taffy HD. So I reached out to them. And they were phenomenal customer service. They were on it right away. They said, oh my gosh, we're so sorry. We apologize for that. Must have got mixed up. And sent me my skeins that I had originally ordered immediately. And then said that they'll send me a shipping label for these two to send back. And then later that day, I got another email. And they said, you know, it was our mistake. Please keep these on us. So, I mean, just, I did not expect this. Because this is a very primo yarn. I would have been happy to send it back but they allowed me to keep it. So thank you, Lamb and Kid. I'm excited for this. I'm definitely going to have to make something fabulous for that. So one more happy mail. It's getting to be Advent season when they start arriving. So I have ordered three and a half advent skeins, advent calendar, yarn calendars this year. And if you don't know what a yarn advent calendar is, is dyers will dye a mini skein, either 24 or 25. Sometimes it's 24 and a full skein. Sometimes it's just 24 minis. Sometimes it's 25 minis. It just really kind of depends on the dyer and what they want to do. And so each day in December leading up to Christmas, you get to open up a mini skein that day. And a lot of people knit like that whole mini skein that day into a project. I am not that person. I like to look at all the colors and then have the yarn kind of speak to me and tell me what it wants to be. Like last year I made my, I used my Advent and made my simple everything sweater, which I do consider a Christmas sweater because I used an Advent to make it. So I just kind of see and I have it all hanging up and you guys will see because I'll do Vlogmas. But one of them, a dyer I follow who's fabulous. She is, I don't even know what her first name is. I don't know. On Instagram, she is sweet nesting, like sweet tooth, sweet nesting. And her yarn is fabulous. She doesn't have a shop. You just follow her feed and direct message her through Instagram. Um, hey, can you dye these colors for me and whatnot? So I actually have a sweater quantity for her over here on my shelf. Maybe that's what I'll work on. 
I've been wondering what my next sweater my next sweater cast on is going to be when I'm done with the Christmas sweaters and everything because generally January my birthday is January 1st and I dedicate January purely to selfish knitting selfish knitting for me things that I want to make myself and I bought that yarn during quarantine in 2020 and it's just sitting there looking gorgeous and it's a custom fade that she did for me and I've been following her and love her. And anyway, I scored one of her advent skeins. And hers is very unique in that how she wraps it. And also, she doesn't label the days like 1 through 25. You just get to pick which day. And she didn't. She does have, this is the big one for 25. And look at this. Look at all the time and effort to wrap all of these in this fun, bright, happy. And she does three different, like, look at, look at, oh fun everywhere she has three different advents that you can choose from she does fingering weight dk weight and then a textured yarn and if you want to see her one from last year i know christy glass got her textured one from last year and she like designed as she went and made this like very textured poncho last year with hers so that was really cool so i'm super excited about this so this is gonna sit all nice in the box until I decorate my knitting room and can hang everything up. And I'm so excited. I can't wait to get the other advents in the mail. I know I have, so I have this one. I have Spun Right Round from Renee. I'm super excited about that one. She's one of my favorite dyers. And Chelsea Yarns in New Jersey. And then uh, Raybot, which is Junk Yarn. She did a 12 day of Christmas. So I have hers coming as well. So I'm very, very, very excited about that. Oh my gosh, so excited. The other things, oh, and when I was, oh, another thing that came in the mail, I started to notice more yarn, like children's books that I am adding to our kids' library, and this one is called Extra Yarn. It's by Mac Barnett, and it was actually a Caldecott honor book. And it's super cute. It's about the illustrations are really cute. It's this little girl and she is in a town that is black and white and gray. And then she comes across this magical box of yarn and she decides to knit a sweater for herself and then one for her dog. And still she has extra yarn. So she just keeps keeps knitting and knitting and knitting and never runs out of yarn and she makes the town everything sweaters so super cute I thought we needed it in our library here at home so if you are needing a gift for or you just want to make that mark of a yarn lover and that you're a yarny in your life to children or anybody else honestly this was just super cute and sweet so that's going to go in my kids library I really love books we have a lot of books in our house. But I was an elementary art teacher. I had tons of books because I was inspired by them and would do lessons from them. Anyway, on to what's next. Whips. All right, let's do it. I have two whips currently. I finished these socks in the car on the way to Mackinac. And then I cast on my second pair of Saturday morning socks from Molly from the Homespun House in the yarn that came in the mail. So look, I just bought different colors. And I'm sorry, I don't know what the colors are because I already put the ball bands inside the balls, the cakes. So I can probably look at my purchase and check later. But I'm right at the heel turn for this. This it is just so plump and squishy. I am super excited about these super cozy it reminds me of like the sky when it snows at night oh my god i love it when it snows at night i love snow i love snow and my favorite kind of snow i call magic snow because it's those big 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 puffy clumps and it doesn't come down it's not like windy it's a very calm night and it falls and it's like it makes everything and it's very weird because it could be really cold outside, but it doesn't actually feel cold because it's magic snow. And it's just, oh man, magic snow. Last year, magic snow happened one night after I put the big girls down to bed. And Maggie was just a little peanut baby. And I'm rocking her. And I noticed it was magic snowing. And I took her outside with her hat on. And Brenton had the Christmas lights on. And it was just 
walking just on the sidewalk in front of the house and just such a magical moment. It was funny. I took a little video and that's when I discovered that if you play music from Apple Music on your phone, if you have an iPhone that is, Apple Music and then record a video, the music keeps playing. So you can actually have your own background music playing while you record. And that's when I noticed that Maggie did not like being out in the snow. <laughs> Her face was all sad. She's like, Oh, she's got the best frowny thing. Like, I hate seeing my kids sad, of course, but her face is so cute when she's sad and pouting. Oh, my God. But magic snow. I love magic snow. So these kind of just remind me of the magic snow, the dark blue. With I know this is this gold color and not a white, but against the blue like this, it kind of looks like speckly snow to me. So that's going. I will keep working on that. Hopefully get the pair done this week and start casting on Christmas sock pat or Christmas sock gifts. I also cast on Edie's Christmas in July kid sweater. I just finished all the color work, so now I need to knit until six and a half inches before I separate for the sleeves. So I'm gonna separate for the sleeves and then finish my sock and then go to the body and keep knitting and I just go back and forth like that. So I'll have mental breaks and say, okay, once I'm done with the body, I'll cast on the other sock and get to the heel. When I'm at the heel, I'll knit the sleeves. When I'm done with the sleeves, the sweater's done, I'll knit the rest of the socks. So I just, I break things up like that to make it interesting and not get uh, too sick of one project, especially when it's a big project. Not that a kid sweater is a big project. My size sweater is much bigger, obviously. So I need more breaks with mine than I do with kid sizes. So it's moving and grooving. I was, I had like a total fudge moment last night when I was knitting this because I cast on last night and Brenton and I were watching uh, Schitt's Creek. And if you haven't watched Schitt's Creek, highly recommend. Um, this is Brenton's first time through the series. So it's been really fun watching him react. So I cast on last night and I did the tubular cast on, which I don't have down by memory. So I was asking him to pause every now and then so I could follow Andrea Mowry's tutorial. So I did the tubular cast on and I did the collar ribbing and I totally spaced last night and forgot to change my needle size after the collar. And I was like, ah, so morning nap time, my big girls are at school, Maggie's sleeping. I'm like, oh, let's see if I, how far I can get on the color work while she's napping for her 45 minutes. And I got like another five rows and I was like, oh shit, I forgot to change needle size. I was like, damn it. So I ripped it back to the ribbing and I picked up all the stitches and I got like another, I don't know, three rows in. And I was like, ah! I started knitting with the small needles again. So I had to rip back not once, but twice. So I was kind of kicking myself a couple times about that, but I'm really happy with it. I think it's really funny because in this yarn, this is Hugh Loco yarn in one of her color riots. This is her sexy Christmas. So much fun. So pretty. It reminds me of like those antique blown glass ornaments. So Edie really loves blue. Lucy really loves green. And I've kind of assigned purple to Maggie. So at the collar, when you cast on, I chose blue for Edie's and there's green in here. See, there's a green and there's another green down here. So Lucy's will have a green and there's a very, very, very faint purple right here. So I'll use that to cast on Maggie's. So that way it'll be really easy for me to look at and tell, this, tell the size difference uh, right away. So this is very fun working on that. So just two whips right now. I'd like to not have too many active whips going. So coming down the pipeline here, let's look at my list. So coming down the pipeline, I'm going to finish those. I also need to, the girls each picked out some yarn from Lamb and Kid. I need to knit them their cowls so that way they're prepared and ready for when it does eventually get colder because I know that's just right around the corner and I don't want to be caught out and have my kids be cold. So work on those. I have some Christmas stockings I need to do. I just want to get those off the brain and I love color works. And those, so once I get going on those, I know they'll fly. I have two to do. For, as a gift and then somebody asked me uh, those like classic vintage intarsia style Christmas stockings you know where it's like very graphic and there's like an angel or Santa Claus or a reindeer or whatever on them. I've knit one when I lived in Indiana a couple of people needed them made you know like the grandma used to make them and now they have new members of the family and grandma's passed on you know can you help so I do an I do like helping people out with that Christmas tradition. I like 
doing that. So somebody reached out who I've knit for before and she's having a new grandbaby. So she needs a new one. So we've got to work on that. So that's what's coming down. I thought I would bring out a couple because getting ready for Mackinac, you know, I had to go open up my cedar chest and pull out some knitwear. And of course I didn't pack any of it when I realized it was going to be that hot, save some space. So this is the pink velvet sweater. So beautiful. So the pink is actually a cashmere yarn from Plucky that I picked up at a Plucky um, second sale back in February of 2020. And it's just so electric pink. And I bought this yarn. This is kind of like an oatmeal-y color, but look at those delicate, delicate speckles. Let me write down the name because I cannot. Marion. Marianth, M-A-R-I-A-N-T-H yarns. She's out of uh, Britain. And she's so good at these, like, I mean, some of these speckles are so small and delicate. It's like half the stitch, like half, one V, one, or like half of the V. It's just so cool. So I paired it with that hot pink. Super fun. I thought it was, I bought that yarn intending to knit the girl sweaters. And then I decided, nope. Um, it sat on my shelf and it was super close to the, that pluck, the pink plucky. And I thought, oh, that looks cool. And I decided to make it short sleeve because I don't have a lot of short sleeve sweaters. So love this. Love this. Worn it a couple times when we had a little bit of a chill a couple weeks ago. This is the Luminosity hat from Tannis Fiber Arts one of her patterns and she does a tubular cast on. She does it a different way than Andrew Mowry. So her way is pretty user friendly. Um, there's some fine cutting there with scissors at one point. So just make sure you have really pointy sharp scissors. So it's an adult hat, but I actually just saw the repeat and shrunk it down and made this for Edie when she was teeny tiny and now it fits Maggie. And the yarn is Madeline Tosh, and this is single ply, which is, I think is, makes really fun for color work. This was just a bunch of unicorn tails. So this now fits Maggie. So I pulled that out for her in case I didn't get the other hats done, but again, they didn't need them. I also pulled out a headband. I love a good headband on a day where it's not a wear your hair down day. So this is, you know, one of my headbands. Mm, mm. This is Spun Right Round in the Spaced Out colorway in her bulky weight. And this was knit using leftovers from, I knit the Ursa sweater in this. I'll show that to you another day because believe it or not, it's still not done. Everything's done on it except just the little detail on the collar that I have to do. So it's literally sitting right over there. I can see it. So lovely, chunky, bulky. And this was just a super basic rib headband. So love headbands in the winter. This is one of my favorite go-to knits. I have knit this pattern so many times. It's called the Brioche Bandana Cowl. It's actually the pattern I used to learn how to do brioche because you learn how to do brioche in the round first, two color, and then you learn how to do it flat and you also learn decreases. So very good introductory pattern. And for those of you who are looking to try brioche, give yourself some grace. Give yourself some grace. Think about when you were first learning how to knit and how many times you had to rip out a project or go back or try, try again. I think as knitters, because generally people who want to try videos have already been knitting for a while and are pretty confident and they do not give themselves the grace that they did when they were first learning how to knit when they're learning the new technique of brioche. Brioche is a completely different way of knitting it's a new language of knitting. You have to relearn how to read your knitting and all of that. So give yourself some grace. I probably ripped mine out a dozen times the first one I made to learn and figure it out. And like I said, I just gave myself that grace. So you can do it. If you have the desire and want, then you can. So this was knit using some more plucky that I picked up at that second sale. And this was, I think, the Lusso base, which is... It's either 100% cashmere or 50 cashmere, 50 silk, or is it 60, 40? It's either 100% cashmere or silk cashmere blend. And I love this knit because 
number one, I love this yarn. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love cashmere? But it's so light and delicate. It doesn't feel like you have this big, heavy shawl or wrap around your neck. Or if you're, if you know it's going to be a day where you're out and about and you have, have like your big heavy coat on, this doesn't take up a lot of bulk and room in there. And it's just the way it comes to a point, that bandana point at the front. So if you have your coat open a bit, then you still have that protection from the wind. It's fabulous. I cannot recommend this pattern enough. Her, uh, it's written by Ivania Patricelli. So just look up DK Band Brioche Bandana Cowl. And she actually has it written in several weights. I think she has it written in four different weights, fingering, DK worsted, and bulky. So you can knit it in so many different yarns. It's just, oh, cannot say enough about it. So this one is fabulous. So beautiful. Another one of my favorite knits, I made this last year. This is the Volcano Trail Cowl. And it's knit using La Bien Ami yarn. She's out of Paris. She is an expat. So she, I can't remember what state she lived in. Somewhere in the Midwest, I want to say, Amy. So she met her husband when she was in France getting her master's. And she just stayed. And the designer on this is Max the Knitter. And this cowl, just, oh, this yarn, this color. Tell you what, Max the Knitter did a fabulous job marketing this as well as Lobby and Me. They've teamed up, obviously. And the photography that they used and the hype that they used on Instagram hyping this up just the colors like there's other more subtle colors but this hot coral and this like electric orange i had to have it was it was a close call between this and they had a purple kit i had to have it it was just so much fun and i had so much yarn left over i knit a pair of fluoride socks from andrew mallory which is a faded sock pattern and then i had i still had i could have knit a whole nother pair of socks but instead i put it into my um my scrappy blanket because I don't generally have a lot of oranges and this like hot coral. So it went in there. This is also amazing. It's tapered. So it's smaller at the top and wider at the bottom. You hold two yarns together and you're fading and blending it the whole time. This could also be a scrappy project. You know, you could blend all your fingering weights together and then just pick a fun pop contrast. This was duplicate stitch afterward. There is some finishing in this project, but for the most part, it's just straight knitting, a little bit of purling. I will say because, you know, I got too big for my britches at one point. I didn't trust the designer like I should have because he is a wonderful designer. And I thought, I don't want to knit this flat and seam it because that's how you do it. You actually knit in the round for a bit up here and then you start knitting flat and then on the round again at the bottom and then you seam it up the side. So I got about, I don't know, here, or maybe not quite that far, but, and I was knitting it in the round because I didn't mind purling. A lot of people don't like purling. I don't mind purling. I didn't mind knitting and purling to get that garter stitch. But the increases you do on the wrong side so that they don't show on the front. And you can't do that when you knit in the round. So I learned my lesson and ripped it out back to here and did it the way he asked for. And I'm so sorry, Max the Knitter, for not following your directions. I learned my lesson. But highly recommend this. Edie actually stole it. The first time I wore it out, I was dropping Edie off to Nature Preschool. And it was cold. It's wintertime. There's snow and all this stuff. And she was unhappy with the cowl that she had brought in for that day. She was unhappy with it. Mom, I don't want to wear this. And I'm like, well, I can't have you be cold. And she's like, can I wear yours? So she got to wear mine <laughs> the first day and broke it in. It comes home and it's all dirty. I had to wash it, of course. So that one, this is just oh, one of my favorite staples. So fun. So fun to knit. So fun to wear. Get compliments on it. It's not super bulky. Mm. So last year, what started the Christmas knitting rage, it was December. And I thought, I just really want something Christmassy colors to wear. So I ordered some loopy mango and I made this hat. 
I love this hat. It makes me really happy. It puts me in the Christmas spirit. It's a loopy mango pattern called, let me, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. The Aviatrix hat. So A-V-I-A-T-R-I-X hat. And it's a loopy mango pattern. So you can check it out on their website. And you start, you know, super fun. I knit this in like an hour and a half. It was so fun because the yarn is enormous. The needles are huge. The stripes keep you super motivated. You know, I mean, who doesn't love a giant pom-pom, a mixed pom-pom like that? So this just made me so happy and it's a little bit slouchy. And I just love this hat. I love that the earpieces kind of flare out a little bit. It makes me feel very elfy. I used a little bit of my contrast and my little tassels at the end. I just, I do. I love this hat. I'm actually considering making another one that's green and white. So that way I have, you know, contrast. Well, we'll see how much yarn I have left over after I finish my Christmas scarf. So yes. <laughs> I love this hat. It makes me very happy. I, I knit another one in blue, the same color blue as Edie's hat, this color. I have a blue one too. So when it's not Christmas, I can have another one. So that's what started the Christmas obsession was this hat. It just made me so happy wearing it and walking around during the Christmas season, especially during COVID and quarantine and not being able to really be close to anybody. You know, my friend Kim and I, we do a Christmas cookie bake. We didn't get to do that last year. You know, we didn't get to do Santa Claus stuff like normal. We didn't go to Bronner's because it was insane. You know, stuff like that. So it was kind of fun to like spread Christmas cheer by what I wore. Like people would like, oh, I love your hat. You know, it was just fun. So what else we got? Mm. So I got my Christmas hat. Mm -mm. When I was on Mackinac Island, you guys, I cannot believe that I have almost 500 follower subscribers right now. That is amazing. I'm shocked and happy and just, oh, thank you. So while I was on Mackinac, I decided that I needed to grab a couple things for a giveaway, a 500 subscriber giveaway. I think I'll do another one at a thousand subscribers, but I thought I'd do one at 500 too. So I picked up this blue Q. Well, it's kind of hard to see with the glare. Well, it says you're beautiful with all these cute little mushrooms on it. This is one of these zipper pencil pouchy bags. I love these. I have several of them. I use them for Notion pouches or sometimes if I have a project or if I have several projects in one bag and lots of needles, I, these fit all my needles really nice just for those specific projects. I use them for cosmetics when I travel. My kids have them and they put all their crayons and colored pencils in when we're out to eat or whatever. So I thought you guys would enjoy one of those. I also picked up, I love stickers. I don't know if you've ever noticed like on my Ikea bookshelves that I keep all my yarn. I have stickers from all over places I go, yarn that I love, sayings I love. So, and they're kind of all over the room and you can't see, but on the side of this, the side is completely covered with stickers. So since I'm from the Midwest, I picked that up when I was on Mackinac for you. And two cute little buttons. One is Be Kind. I didn't realize I got two of them that are rainbow. <laughs> Hope you like rainbows. And this one says grateful. So that will be a 500 subscriber giveaway. I will figure out how you can enter to win this once we hit 500 subscribers. So that's coming up. Yay. I'm just so excited, you guys. I'm just so excited. Thank you. Keep like, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and I don't know if you already know, I'll keep saying it. I don't really do a ton of show notes because I'm a super busy mom and I don't really have a whole lot of time to do it. But if you leave a comment with your question, I will respond. Or if you go over and check on my Instagram, when I post the screenshot for this episode, I try to tag or hashtag or leave a, I, that's kind of like my abbreviated show notes. I will tag all of the makers, the yarn patterns, all of that stuff. I will tag them in there so you can go and check. And if it's, um, like a pattern name, I will hashtag the pattern name for you. So that's kind of my abbreviated show notes. I hope that helps Sharon, chicken Sharon. She's always bugging me for show notes. I'm so sorry, Sharon. I just, I don't have the time. 
but just ask and I will be happy to say. I'm looking forward to teaching this Saturday at Stranded. That's my local yarn shop here in Midland. This Saturday is my first class. So if you are new to knitting and you need a beginner class, that is what I'm teaching. More classes to come. Super excited. Can't wait to get back into teaching and watch other people fall in love with something that I hopefully fall in love with something that I truly love. And also looking forward to, I'm going to a fiber retreat, my very first one. I'm very excited up in Northport, Michigan. It's the Sleeping Bear Fiber Retreat. Really looking forward to going and doing that. I was got lucky and someone canceled and I snatched up that spot. So really looking forward to that. Really debating in my head, like, okay, what am I going to knit on this retreat? It's at the beginning of November. My dad will have had surgery a couple weeks before. So I'm looking forward to having some quiet mommy time. Not necessarily quiet because there's going to be other knitters there. So I know there's going to be lots of talking and visiting and con making connections and meeting people. I'm excited. But just other people who love what I love and filling your buckets and with positivity. I'm really excited. So I hope you have a good week. All of you lucky girls and gals and pals who all get to go to Rhinebeck next week. I'm super jealous. I'm all my Rhinebeck friends are going. I didn't know everybody was going till this week. So I don't get to go this year. Next year is the big year for me. So have some fun, squish some yarn, encourage each other, compliment each other, have a great time and send me some pictures so I can shop with I love you all. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time.